morning. Amen. To see all of your lovely faces. It's so good. I'm so glad that you're here. Can you just look at somebody and say, I'm glad to see you. Now, now, if they smile at you, you got the right seat. If they didn't give you a smile, say, you hear what I said? I said, I'm glad to see you. Now, let me see what's left up in there. 33, 45, 2, possible, whatever's in there. I want to see. Amen? If they smile, you got the right seat. We are such, we are so grateful um, and privileged to be before you. I know she already did it, but I was how we feel about our new family being in this place this morning. There is absolutely, positively nothing you can do about it. Amen? Yeah. You can't do nothing about it, Mama. I love you. You know what I say? Uh, we love you. I'm so grateful that you are here. Uh, we bid you greetings on, um, and Jesus' joy on, on behalf of myself. Matter of fact, baby, can you, can you come here with me? I ain't saying she this time. I want you to Amen. <laughs> Just so little bit after the end of the year, so little bit this morning, just a little bit, just a little bit. Amen. I honor the Lord for all of you. Hey, ain't she pretty? Isn't yeah. she wonderful? <laughs> Isn't she wonderful? I'm in church. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So we're just grateful. Uh, we we are so. And I'll tell you something. I've been overjoyed um, all week long. It's been a journey. Actually, I, five family, how y'all feel about our new place this morning? Uh, it, 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 I tell people all the time, we are portable, not permanent. Revival Center is who we are. It's not where we are. Amen? Amen. It can go wherever we go. And, um, and, and we, have been, we have been journeying throughout the course of the months. And I believe God is really just giving us a taste of where we're going. Uh, we put out a charge. Um, that I don't know how God's doing. As a matter of fact, it's not our job to figure out the how of God. We just got to be, be, be obedient to the what of God. Amen? Yeah. If you can be obedient to the what, God already got the how. Yeah. 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 Matter of fact, you can talk because I just gave you a sermon for this one. Amen? We go home right now. Don't worry about the how. Just do the what. And then God will, God will um, mark it out the rest. But we're so blessed and honored, amen, for this being our first season. And God is showing life and productivity, amen, by bringing Mrs. Azariah into the world. Amen. You know what I love about babies being at this age? I get to hold them and then give them back to their parents. Isn't that wonderful? Brother, you know, if they can stay the baby size, oh man, I have a whole heap of That's always going to be a heap. Oh, I have a whole heap of children. But then they grow up, and then they get, they get <laughs> attitude. They get sassy. You know what I mean? They, 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 huh? they, they, they get old, they begin to talk back to you. They have an inkling and, and an opinion. Amen. But as the Bible says um, in Psalms 127 and 3, Children are an inheritance. Yeah. Amen. They are the longevity and the extension of who God called us to be. And to that end, we wanted and so grateful that the parents of this beautiful baby, our brother um, um, Mojo and Sister Tarnisha, amen, wanted to um, dedicate this child back to the Lord. Aren't we glad, church? Yeah. Amen. For that, what we're going to do, we're going to call for the parents, the grandparents, um, and the uncles, uh, cousins, nieces, nephews, godparents, if they're needing. And we're going to um, dedicate her back to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So grateful to do that. And then uh, we're so blessed because we are preparing and we're going to have our first baptism as well. Amen. Amen. So those of you, <laughs> those of you who haven't been down, let me put my, my face on. Haven't been down in the water. Amen. We're going to, um, we've already prepared the location. We'll be right here on the grounds. And so you can see, um, shoot, my Michelle's not here. You can see, Shannon, raise your hand, sweetheart. Our administrator, you can see Shannon and put your name on the list if you want to. Uh, 
participate and be uh, baptized and understanding the baptism. The reason we won't baptize as a lie is this, because the Bible comes back and says that there must be a, a conscious awareness and decision for you to want to be water baptized. And what the water baptism represents is your commitment and agreement to what God has done. And so therefore, what we're going to do this morning is we're going to dedicate this child, uh, placing her back into the hands of God until she's at the place where she can make determination and decision, amen, to walk after God and his own word. Amen? amen. So let us call this call the parents, the baby forth, the parents, grandparents, whomever you guys would want to uh, come this morning. You guys can stand right up here. That's right. Amen. God bless all of you. That's right. And it's good to have family. God knows it's good to have family. No, you can turn off. Listen, Judy is always before age. Amen. This is her day. Come on, can we thank God for the family?
yet the baby was still breathing. Aren't you glad that we have parents that are willing, and who knows, as a lie, we be on the land of God, that will be able to minister to one of those children who at that time were given away because she's been given back to the Lord. That's our desire. I wrote something down and I wanted to have us to charge. The Bible says, Psalms 127 3, the children are an inheritance of the Lord. Secondly, Mark chapter 10, verse 13 through 16, the Bible says, Jesus blessed every child that were brought to him. Am I doing it right? I'm not doing it right. I'm going to let my wife do this because she got an anointing. I pay bills, she who babies. Okay, 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 that transition, all right. Can y'all tell me we had four children? <laughs> don't look at them, you don't know how they made it. Amen, <laughs> amen. <laughs> Amen. We had one child one time. She was uh, her age. And I uh, had left her in the care of my wife. And I told my wife, I want you to take care of this child while I go to work. And I came home, sir. And I was tired from working. And um, when I went in to refresh myself, the baby was on the bed looking at the smiling, sir. When I came out of the, the, the restroom, all I was hearing was winging, winging, winging. I said, where is the baby? Where is the baby? My wife said, but I thought she was with you. <laughs> My baby, Cameron, who was, who was our oldest, she had fell off the bed and rolled under the bed. <laughs> and when I found her, TK, she was under the bed like, how you leave me with that chick? <laughs> but we made it, we made it. And she told me she wants some more children. Not here in Jesus' name. All right, all right. Here it is. It is a privilege of this church. We are encouraged as pastors and parents the proper training and development of our children. Therefore, it is appropriate for our homes and church to unite in the service, dedication, and giving back of this child. The act of dedication is in keeping with the teaching of God's word and is an example as in Mark 10 and 13 where Jesus was dedicated even by his parents. So it is in this service of dedication we are first to give thanks to God for allowing your womb to be blessed to bring forth seed. And all that you endure, being your first baby, every pain, every pickle, every ice cream, every, I don't know what urge you had, but the process of getting this sweet baby here, God allowed you the gift to bring forth. Amen. And the man of God to bring forth seed. Amen. God honored you. God favored you both to bring this one. Who knows? That will be the next hmm, world change. It's our heart and our prayer. We are relying on the grace of God and working together as your church and with your family. That we will endeavor to provide the guidance, the wisdom, the understanding, those of your parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, that would relent and lend wisdom and understanding. The Bible says, I'm going to paraphrase it, listen to Listen to them, for they have counsel. Now, I know times have changed, but the order is still the same. And we will never get into a place. I'm 40, how old am I, baby? 27. 42, amen. 41, where am I? Okay. But my mother still has the anointing. Don't judge me. My mother still has the grace of anointing to speak into my life. And in the life of my children and my marriage. And even though we've gained some things, I still allow my ear to hear. So, parents, it is a charge to you as well, uncles, and grandparents, to lend your wisdom, 
Let your grace, what God has allowed you to endure, we need your voice. The Bible says he does call us young because we are strong, we have strength. But what is strength if you ain't got the brain to use it? That's why he says, I don't call them old, I call them seasoned. Mom, because anything old, you throw away. But anything seasoned, amen, you keep. So we call the season for wisdom and counsel. Amen. So parents, listen to them. Even if you already wrapped the baby, powdered the baby, put the pamper on right, and, and mama come back and say, mm -mm, that's wrong. Don't say, mama, I already did it. No. Let, is God speaking? I ain't even been there. God Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because I got two grandparents. They'll just come in and change me. They change my wife. They change the children. They change the drinks. They change the food. They change the kitchen. They change the living room. Let them change. There is something that God is causing them to impart into this thing. As she holds the baby. As she holds. As she rocks. Counsel. Amen. It's going to benefit not just you, but this sweet baby. Amen. So, in the presenting of this child to the Lord, here's a charge. Parents, godparents, uncles, aunts. Do you promise and commit? And the dependence upon God's grace, excuse me, and upon the partnership of the parents to teach this child the truth of the Christian faith, to set an example before her, to bring her up in the instruction and in the discipline of the Lord, and to encourage her to accept the benefits and the beliefs of walking with Jesus Christ as her Savior under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, do you commit to rearing her, to posting her, to keep and maintain her integrity and her character? Women, there is a charge. Will you commit that you will always admonish her to be a daughter of Zion, be a woman of grace, be a woman of favor, and not to be loose and to have her own lifestyle but to be example? Do you? And you can respond by saying, we do. Church, there's a charge to us. I ask you, do you, as the body of this church, promise to join with these parents in the teaching and training of this child that she may be led in due time to trust God as her Savior, to confess Him, and to be one of the body, to accept this responsibility of helping the parents lead, of helping the parents guide, of helping the parents to instruct, of helping the parents to suggest and to commend her to the Lord. Do you so promise and you can respond by saying, we do.
that wherever you go, that you will always walk in the wisdom of God. That you will always walk in the character of God. That you will always walk in the integrity of God. We pray for the favor of God to rest on you, heavenly. That even as a young, young age, young lady, that God will give you wisdom beyond your ears. Everywhere you go, you'll bring joy and laughter. You'll bring peace and contentment. That wherever your presence is, deliverance will take place. We anoint your hands. That as you are made in the image of God, as He is so created, that you will be a young age creative. That we won't diminish your dream for trying to fulfill ours, but we will ask God for the grace to cultivate the anointing that's on your life. For the Bible says in the book of Psalms, many are the plans that are in man's heart. Your mother, your father, your grandparents, your uncles have plans for you, but the scripture says it's only the will of the Lord that's going to be accomplished in your life. So we pray that God will anoint your parents with the anointing and grace to cultivate the gift that is on you. you be able to hear his voice. And hear his voice clearly. Church can you stand? I want you to stretch your hands and swear to our family and join this baby. Okay, before y'all go, before the parent, you can go. Oh, did we get pictures? Did we get pictures? Y'all got pictures? Off of them? Yeah, y'all go. Y'all go ahead and take your photo shots. Family, if y'all can come back one more time, we're going to give a shot and a good picture.
We have a presentation for the baby and the family. Amen on behalf, amen of the church. And I'm gonna let um, our administrator, Shannon, do she's gonna come and make a presentation. Why? Because you've accepted me 
and the fact that you've accepted me, you accepted my ability. Bible says in Genesis 1 and 26, one of my favorite scriptures, if you ever found yourself needing to understand your purpose, your why are you on the planet, the Bible is very clear where it identifies who it is you're made from, why it is you're made, and what you're going to do being that you're made from God. The Bible says, it says, let us make man in our image and in our, I say likeness, like, like God, image, like him, likeness, like. image is the essence of God. Essence represents how his nature, his character, how he is. You want to know why I don't clap back at you? You want to know why I don't look at you? Well, it's because I understand who I'm made after. Yeah, I know some of us want to knock you out. Some of us want to snap you down because I'm in the nature of God where it says, I love my enemies. I know I'm going to get no response on that. It's, it's hard, well, challenging if you will, if you want to be, but when you are identified with God, then that love that you would have toward those who are not in your own at your best interest, you're able to do that. So he says, not only will you have my essence, but you'll have my energies. Energies speak to the actions of God. You're able to move. You're able to be, I like to say this word, creative. Bible says, God says, and let us make. One thing I want you to do, I want you to look at your hands. I want you to look at your hands. Look at your hands. I want you to know the hands that you are looking at are without limits. Because you are in the image of God, you are created. Somebody shout creative. Yes. That's why it's not for us to really look for people to become a source when God has already given us the power to become a resource. Amen. I'll say it again. Say I'm creative. I, I love to talk this way to men uh, because God hardwired us to always want to create. That's why my wife always ensures that she has a phone call anytime I grab tools. Yeah, I like to do stuff. It's in my nature to fix things, right? If it's broke, I can do it, right? There's nothing I cannot do. Why? Because God says, I am created. That's why you can put the kitchen light on and the master bedroom are bathroom flushes. Yeah, I'm created. Oh, y'all don't play me like that. That's all right. That's cool. That's all right. That's why great tape is everywhere when it comes to electrical in my house. Don't judge me. I am created. Yeah. Y'all don't play me? That's why we get frustrated when things don't work according to our nature. Why? Because we want to fix things. But can I help you? The Bible says some things are not made for you to fix. Some things God himself won't be credit for. And what I would do is I would take pride and try to do the job of God and I, get, I end up limiting him in the ability to work out in my life. So that energy comes from being created. Another way that you can do it, the Bible says here in Luke 1 and 37, the Bible says, for with God. I want you to put that on the screen because that's where we're going to come from today. For with God. Luke 1 and 37. Get your Bibles if you got your Bibles. Grab your phone if you got your phones. Amen. If you got Samsung, it's all right. We'll lay hands on you. Until God gracious you to get an iPhone in Jesus' name. All right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Hey man, I fall, I fall. It's all right, keep going, keep going. Luke 137. Luke 137. You gotta see I got it. I got it. Need a minute, say give me a minute. One more minute. One more minute. Alright, we're waiting on you to have something. We're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. Okay. 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 Alright, here we go. Luke 137. Luke 137. Everybody, we're gonna read it together. And it says, ready? Read. For with God. With God. God. Nothing. Nothing. Say that loud. Nothing. Say that loud. Nothing. For with God, nothing, nothing shall, shall, I'll get it, shall, as a promise, be what? Yeah. I want you to mentally highlight with God, nothing impossible. The most important thing I want you to get today is this. Don't limit the impossibility of God. 
The Bible says clearly here, Luke 1 37, for with God, nothing, listen, church, nothing is impossible. Here it is from the Amplified. It says, for with God, nothing is uh-huh. Ever what? And no word from what? Shall be without what? Or of what? Just lean over your neighbor and tell him if he said it, it's going to happen. Now here's what I like to do. I like to give God thanks in advance for the word I just released. Come on, clap your hands and say it. Can we stop using our money for food and 
gas? And, and let's really think bigger now. How many of us are living beyond our ability simply because of the way that we're thinking? The Bible says in the book of Psalms, as a man think within his heart, that is exactly where he was say. And we, we limit him based on how small we think. Majority of us today are not reaching our maximum level of success in God for a number of reasons. One in particular is because of the way we are thinking. One of the other issues I have is this, because everything begins with a seed. I gave you a couple of ways by which we are able to limit God. One of them has to come with how we think, which is the way we believe. The first order of business we need to address is wrong belief. Let me go ahead and cure you and deliver you from this belief. God is not mad at you. God don't hate you. Just because your car ran out of gas was not because God was getting you. That's because you got a five on five and you should have got five on five. Uh, uh, do lights that go out because the devil is on your track? Can I tell you why your lights went out? Because you got that new, uh, <laughs> you got that new, so in. We well, yeah. well, you should have plugged it. Amen, praise the Lord. But it's not God's, no, no, it's not God's fault. And one of the wrong beliefs we put is a lot of times we put the pressure down, not the advocate of the devil, but I will speak to you. A lot of the stuff that we blame him for is really us. Is that you are having your heart unforgiven? 
things. And what I need you to do, I need you to work on that area in your life. Now we'll praise God, we'll worship God, but when it comes to one sheep, Lord, I, I ain't ready for that yet. I, I don't know about that. I, I will forgive, but I won't. Oh, y'all living in that world too? But I will tell you, not forgetting is the same as not forgiving. And God says you will stay right there until you master that level. That's why the children of Israel, they stayed in the wilderness. How long? How long? It was a 72 hour journey. They would have actually been in the promised land three days after they left Egypt had they not moved and let God do everything in their life. But they wasted 40 years because of wrong belief. Let me ask you something. How long have you been there? You ready to go? Here's the challenge. Forgive. Beautiful sacred Holy Spirit. There's this massive conversation via social media about the young man who asks the word to forgive that he forgives her. How many of y'all heard that? How many of y'all saw that? How many of y'all know the whole story? Well, I, okay, I'm not going to go. Watch this. Instead of the magnitude of the moment of this boy who would listen to me never see his brother again has the ability to become judge and jury has his platform and his moment to condemn her to the, to the lowest parts of the shield, the Gaia the lowest parts of the earth and he opens his mouth and says I don't even want you to Look, some of them cut us off in traffic, what y'all be doing? Get them, Jesus. This shit you do right by me? Why y'all gonna act like that now? What I need to do is put a camera in every car in this room. And when somebody cuts you off in traffic, mama, I bet the hand signal that they give it is not God bless you. Right? But he loves and says, I don't want you to go to jail. As a matter of fact, I think the best thing for you to do is to give your heart to Jesus. Amen. My brother would want you to give your heart to Jesus. I think that's the best thing for you to do. Then he says, John, may I, may I go and hug her? Instead of magnifying the power of forgiveness, what did we do? We criticize because watch this. Not only did he hug him, who? Yeah. The who? Yeah. You mean to tell me she broke all manner of order and, re and released her chamber to come down and hug a murderer? The nerve of her. You, who else did it? And just gave a what? A word? The nerve of her. She should have put her under the chair. Three times over. But what did we walk away with? I can't believe her. You know, and, 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 and so many people were asking me, Vic, what's your take on it? Man, it should have been this way. It was so, it was so many things, racial. And I said, let me ask you something. One thing, I said, let me tell you something. One thing you cannot deny is the power of God. Amen. When the power of God, the presence of God come in, it will subdue all order because of its overwhelming presence. And when that boy invoked the power of love and forgiveness in that room, the judge had no, everything in that courtroom was subject to the power of God. When, when you invoke the presence of God, it will, he says nothing is impossible. When that judge got out of that seat and hugged that woman, what she said was, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Now, it did not relinquish the deed that she had done. However, it didn't hold it to her charge. What it was, it was a prophetic scene of how Jesus deals with us. 
Men will remind you of your past. God will always remind you of your future. Amen. Amen. And God says, if you locked into me, I don't care what you've done, watch this, or even what you may do. As we saw this morning, the reckless love of God pursues you beyond your ability. So one of the wrong things you got to dispel is that once you mess up, you are, you are mud with God. That's how we do it. That's not how God operates. Let me ask you this. I love to put this up. How many of you have been blessed by the book of Psalms? Anybody? Oh, we, I know we know the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my what? Uh huh. We can go there. One Psalm 100. I will bless the Lord at all. 34. Psalm 34. I bless the Lord at all times. And praise shall continue to be in my heart. Psalm 100. Make a draw from us unto the Lord. Oh, ye land, serve the Lord. That, do you understand that that letter, those letters were written from a lying, adultery, murdering king who was chosen by God? Why is that important? Because it does not matter who you think you're not. God has already determined who you will be. Yeah. Amen. 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 This is I say there is nothing impossible. There is nothing impossible. I wanted to, in my last few moments here, I'm going to deal with this way that we got to get rid of. And, and, and we'll move from here. The second way that we live in God is that we get so locked in, everybody say, to the cares of this world. To the cares of this world. The cares of this world. Luke 21, 34 says, and take heed. To yourselves, lest any time your hearts be overcharged with su with suffering and drunkenness and cares of this life, the anxieties and worries concerning the interests of the person's age, the deceitfulness of riches. These are the areas where which we can limit God dealing with the cares of this world. This refers to the deceptive nature of wealth and always promising to satisfy and never being able to fulfill the promise. That's another way the desires for other things, he says. This, re this refers to the longing or craving for other things which would show the word of God in my life and cause it not to become fruitful. Here it is what you got to do because you will move into these areas when you started to pursue other things. Go to um, 1 John 2.15. Put it on the screen. You don't have to go to it in my movement. 1 John uh, chapter 2, verse 15. And it says this. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Why? If any man love the world, then the love of the Father is not in him. Why is that important? He said, you want to live in this world. I'm not just, I put you down here so that you can be a representation of what heaven looks like. So I, I, I'm not crazy to know that there are going to be some things in this world that you're going to like. The problem comes when you make, when you make them the God instead of you serving, instead of it serving you, serving your purpose, you turn it and now you're serving it. We did an example the last time we were together with what the area is about money. Uh, we, we broke down one of those long scriptures that's misinterpreted where we talked about the, the, the love of money is the root of what? All evil. Did, did, now some of us believe that it was money was the root of all evil, right? How how long you talk? Oh, you can't you you can't you can't you can't go out there and get no job and go after you know, who told you that? Uh, you, you better go out there and get a job. Because that same Bible tell you, a man who don't use his hands and work from the sweat of his brow, this is what the Bible call you, a thief. Mm. Mm. And the church said, amen. amen. He didn't say money was the root of all evil. What did he say? Uh -huh. But he takes your attention away from you. As a matter of fact, money is not the only thing that you can take your attention away. Even, watch this, I'll get ready to mess up. Even your, your boo. Your love thing. Mm -hmm. Your girl, your baby. Don't let her or him become so much more than the love of God. Once it does, that whole relationship has to be turned upside down. Now, let's be mindful. God instituted relationships so he wants you to be intertwined with someone of the opposite sex. 
Is this thing on? God told, God told Adam, it's not good for what? Mind you, he just didn't make that signal to Adam. He also made that to Eve. Because Eve was, Eve came from who? So when he said man, he was talking about the origin of not just man, but that whole man. It's not good for y'all to be alone. Because when y'all be alone, y'all be angry. When y'all be alone, y'all, 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 okay, y'all don't act like that. I know how I was before I found my wife. I was messed up, bro. This is me, messed up. Well, let me tell the truth. I was good. <laughs> I was chilling. I was about seventy-five percent. But brother, when she came, she rocked my world. This I left my mama for my wife. I left my mother for my wife. I left my mother for my mama business. I left my mother. <laughs> All right? So, so here it is. God desires for you to have a relationship. But it's in Him where you're going to really see how the relationship evolves. I, and, I, and I began to love my wife more as I fall into how God loves me and how He treats me and how He handles me teaches me how to handle her. Because you know the Bible tells us as husbands that we are to love our wives as how much does Christ love the church as I have asked myself how does Christ treat the church even when the church reneges on him and do things contrary to what he wants them to do. He never condemns the church. He continues to love the church. Right? So what if you're hungry and she burned the last can of biscuits that you got that y'all had all you do from the other 350 and let it sit for 45 minutes. And she burned all the business. What you gonna do? Are you gonna them? No, what you gonna do? Get caught? Go go to Argus. <laughs> I just gave y'all a word, y'all missed it. I'm showing you how God refers to us. And so therefore, you have to be in a place where you become acquainted with who he is so that you'll be able to operate as you're supposed to. Somebody shout, help me to love. Help me to love. There's another way, there's another thing that, that was happening. What happens when I walk away from this, the destruction and perdition are synonymous with ruin and irrever irrevocable loss. The loss may be experienced in this life when a wrong person or wrong purpose for living is pursued. Can I be honest with you? You are not living in this life to pursue houses, cars, and land. I gave it to you the last time I was here. Put Matthew 6 and 33 on the screen. I want to give you the key young per young people I'm giving you today. I'm giving it to you season, season saints. Here is how you're going to un unlock the next season in your life. Go to Matthew 6 and 33. Here is how even if you're in a situation where you're feeling like nothing is coming in and nothing is going out, I want you to realign your focus. Matthew 6 and 33 gives you the key to the next promotion, the key to the next open door, the key to your healing, the key to your deliverance, the key to you being free. Look at what it says. It says, but, if you see the word but anytime, anywhere, in your English teacher, she should have been, she should have been the one to tell you, when you see but, what does it mean to the prior sentence? No matter what that sentence says, pay attention now. He says, but what? See. See. What does it mean to see? Search, go after. You cannot go after what you don't know where it is. See ye what? Priority. That's very important. Put him where he belongs. We got to reorganize how we do life. We put God last. We put him as a phone of friend. We put him in the case of my plan not working. And then we call God to fix the mess that we got in. But if we realign our purpose the way God intended so that we can live this limitless life, we got to prioritize and put him where? First. 
First when? All right. When? Everything. In everything. He has to be priority. He said, seek what? First, the what? Yeah. This is the nature of God. The kingdom is not a place, it's not a church, it's not how you dress, it's not how you talk, it's not how you pray. The kingdom of God is a lifestyle. Let me show you what the kingdom of God looks like. Love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Forgive those that despitefully use you. Amen. Comfort those that need comfort. The kingdom of God looks like that. The kingdom of God looks like a person that has seen it and has repented. What is repentance? Repentance means to do a, a 360 degree turn. No. Or oh, is that a 360? No. It's a 180. It means to go opposite from the way I was born. See, when you repent, it means you change. Not for the day, but for life. And he says, see first the nature of God and what? How he operates. Okay, class. What is righteousness? White suits and community. Long dresses and no earrings. What is righteousness, class? I was glad when I got to live and they said women can wear makeup or whatever. I'm be honest with some brother these clothes are rude and they're not in I'm just I'm just I'm just Wrong belief. Wrong belief, people. Listen to me. Wrong belief. I came up under that. I came up under the, under the teaching where how y'all sit right now? Y'all couldn't sit like that. The husbands had to sit on one side and the women had to sit on the other. That's the church I came from. I don't care how I happened in marriage, y'all. Y'all didn't sit together in church. Now God then broke that he said, now we still don't want to sit together in church. <laughs> and there's a uh, that's, that's, that's the wrong belief I came up in. Men couldn't wear shorts. We, he, he, we, I, I'm serious, bro. It's summertime, and we all are sweating in church. <laughs> Big nicks, we got on long pants and stay the out. Y'all won't go there. Am I talking to mother? Am I, listen, that's how we, Big Nick. And we got on stages. I wish y'all would come out there with some bands and some shorts. He's going to get condemned. Wrong belief. Can I submit to you that there's still some people who are living with that restriction right now? God is not about restriction. He's about responsibility. And see, once you come into the kingdom of God, God does not, God does not have to tell you what not to do because you're so in love with who he is, you choose not to do it. Does that make sense? Let me ask you something. Why don't you put your hand on a hot stove? Now he was like, I ain't even need That's the content. <laughs> That's the kingdom of God. See, when you're connected to the kingdom, nobody has to tell you not to put yourself in a position that your spirit can't get you out of. Mm -hmm. When you're connected to the kingdom of God, if God delivered you from drunk, drinking, smoking, lust, lust living, or whatever you were doing, when you come into that nation and kingdom, nobody has to tell you, don't be outside the house after 12, because ain't nothing out there. But y'all know the song, don't come out at night. I'm out at night. What you say? I'm out. Y'all don't know that. Why y'all ain't got a mother on that with a song? Don't play me like that. Y'all know how my brain set up. That's how my brain set up, right? Nobody has to tell you. If, if, God, if God brought you and delivered you and freed you from an area in your life and He tells you this is how you're going to be free, nobody needs to command you and hold your hand so that you won't do it. You do it because it's common sense. Amen. Amen. I'm a happy and married man of 20 plus years. I'm not hanging out with no broke single brothers. Amen. <laughs> Only women bashing and tanning up with the futures. Let me tell you something. I'm a happy bro. I'm a happy and married man. I'm surely not going around some single women. They like both. You handsome, you better care. Yeah, I 
do you go to let me play, let me play, let me have function up with No, no. When you are in the nature of God, you know, it, it, it always allows you to know I know who I am. So I don't have to operate at a level that's less than my limits is living. Baby, if you know you're beautiful, you don't need no rope, no working, sitting in a passenger side of the car seat that you paid money for. Dude, I'm telling you. What's up, girl? What's your Instagram? <laughs> Listen, I was telling a group of uh, entrepreneurs this. 
Anoint the anointing only flows through authenticity. It's not going to flow with you trying to be like me, me trying to be like you. You have to be who God created you to be. And once you do that, the earth gets to reap the benefit of the authentic, authentic person you are. But when you stop and you try to be your girlfriend and you try to be your homie, you try to be somebody else, you lose that essence of authenticity and the earth, we are denied of what God put you on this planet to give us. Look at your neighbor and say, give me my gift. Give me my gift. Look at your neighbor and say, give me my gift. I don't need you trying to be somebody else. I need you to be who God has called you to be. What he's given you, what is the gift that God has given you? That you did not use it because you think you can't or it doesn't look like this, that. No, it's who God made you to be. Who God called you to be. I was in my car when we were to um, shut it down. We were, we had to go fly out um, and do a funeral in Atlanta last week. And uh, <laughs> when we got to the we got to the airport, we got to the check-in, and the stewardess said, um, we went up to the ticket and said, well, hey, you know, we picked up Simon Johnson and we're going to check in. Oh, you're, you're the special couple uh, that we were already prepared for. Uh, you, you guys actually have a plane to yourselves. And so, you know, I think he's joking, you know, <laughs> it's one and one, they don't play jokes. <laughs> check us in, bro. Check us in, one lady, one down, one rich people. Check us in, right? So he said, yeah, you guys have and guys, we literally had to point to ourselves. Let me tell you something. When, we, when, they, when they took us to the plane, we had to walk on the one way to the plane. Bro, we felt like the AJ. I was living for the camera. I was living for the I was just living for somebody to take a picture. Hey, I nobody to take a picture. Hey, I was, I was walking. I was in great shape. He said, oh, no, no, no. Let, let me take you back. What? <laughs> My wife didn't tell me nothing. I said, hey, girl, fix my drink. <laughs> she, she was trying to, she was asleep, but when, it, when she started walking to the place, she woke up to my way, one way. I said, you know, you don't walk like that. You fix yourself, right? I said, no, we ain't been JV. We've been in summer. We, God has shown us where we belong. And we literally, listen to me, we had that whole, we could have been high no seat on that plane. But you know, she don't like to play games. I'm going to put with all the 
intents and purposes that that part of the medical field with pills and so forth out of business because of the power of the belief in God. I, I don't want us living our lives every day getting up on this merry go round of stress. The more work we're doing, the less money we're having, and the less enjoyment. The Bible says, serve the Lord with what? You, you should be happy in doing what you're doing. And if you're never able to enjoy the fruit of your labor, you work in five jobs, working 20 hours per job, and you cannot enjoy it, brother, we got we to gotta make some things. And I believe God will give you one gig and have you turn up, and that gig will be less than the five you're working, and you'll get more of what you're doing less. Amen. That's, that's kingdom. Y'all need to be like that. I'm telling you how God wants us to move in this yeah. season. Entrepreneurs are in this building. But God says, you got to realign so I can fix it so you would never, here it is, be broken every day in your life. That though the seasons transition and they can go, but it'll never go out. That's the season. That's the place that God is calling us. That's the limitless <coughs> that we want to live. I'm going to ask you, if you're saying, Big listen, man, I am under stress. I'm working more and gaining less. I just need you to agree with me. I want, you, I want to agree with you today. It was strong when I was driving in this morning and, and the Holy Spirit was dealing with my heart. He says, Vic, I want you to cover. I want you to pray for those who are under stress. You're stressed. Listen to me. You're in your beds, but you're not sleeping. You're paying $300 for pillows and yet you can't go to bed. That ain't God. You bought a pillow to do what? Go to sleep. You're not going to have to take drugs to go to sleep. Because if you got to take drugs to go to sleep, what you want to take? Get up. The way this system works for every pill, there's five side effects. And for every side effect, you got to have a pill for those five. So if you got five side effects, those side effects have multiple side effects, right? The way of the enemy's world is to keep us on the side. But God says, I came to break the side. I'm going to stand to you for you. I want to pray. I want to pray for you today. I want to pray today that you won't be a victim of the cares of this world. One of the scriptures God says is that you ought to cast your what? Cares upon who? Who, who goes fishing? What is it? What, who goes fishing? 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 Who goes real fishing? I'm not talking about those who like me go feed fish. I'm talking about those out there who know what they know. Got about five different rods. You got about three different baits. But you got to understand, every fish don't eat the same bait. I just know that. So the fish know when I come. They go to the corral when I come. They, they eat. But I'm talking about those who are fish. When, when they say that when you, when you cast that reel, what are you doing? What are you doing when you cast that line? You've thrown in that, you've thrown it as far as you're able. Today I want you to have that same mindset. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to, I want you to grab every present care that's on you right now. What's the last thing that was on your mind before you went to sleep? The first thing that hit your brain before you like, woke up this morning. You're driving here and was yet still dealing with God says, I want it to. I want you to give me what you can't fix. I want to work it for you. I want you to start living. I don't want you to be, be in this world to try to make a living. That's not what you try to do. You don't make a living, you live a life. But I want to connect with you today. Those of you, you're, you're overly stressed. You, you're stressed about your family. You're stressed about your children. You're, Stress about your age and stressing about where you are in life. And I should be here by now. I, I got more time behind me than I do in front of me. I, I want to take, take that from you today. I want to let you know that there's a God that we serve that doesn't see the way you see. As you think you got more time behind you than you do in front, God said you got more in front of you than you do behind. I said, I want to rearrange your perception of thinking. It ain't over for you, you just didn't start. That failure to perform, that fear to succeed, I want that today. 
God says, I didn't give you the spirit of fear. But what I made you, I put my spirit in you. And in my spirit, there is no fear. There is no impossibility. I want to talk to you today. Bless you, bless you. You, you, you. God is filling you with more. And you're asking yourself, how do I get there? How do I get there? I'm, 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 some of you stuck in life. You're just stuck. What do I do now? I want to talk to you today. I want to take that stress away from you. God has a vision and a plan for your life. God says in 2 Peter chapter 1 and 3, one of my favorite scriptures. He says, through the divine power of God, has he given us all things that pertain to life in the natural and godliness in the spirit. I'm so glad that you kept that scripture up because it told me to remind you of the last of the verse. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he says, when you're stressing about all these things, he says, if you prioritize me and put me where I belong, he says, the things here, I'm going to paraphrase, all these things shall be added unto you. That simply means what you would normally pursue, you start to pursue you. But you got to put me first. Don't stop. Keep moving toward where he showed you. Because when you stop, you stop momentum. When you stop, you stop momentum. I was driving this morning on my way to church, and I was so anticipating getting here. And there was this man, his car, his car went out. And I saw him pushing his car, and I was like, man. I got to get to the church. Now he's pushing us. Man, I got to pull this trail over. I pulled the trail over. I got out. We down. We coming out close. Pushing this car. Pushing this. Then him. And I'm running behind him. And uh, he's pulling. And then I said, man, get in the car. Get in the car. We're pushing. Get in the car. As soon as you get in the car, we got a good speed. He jams on brake. Man, I went on through that back off. Boom. I said, hey. Sorry. I said, you put your foot on the brake. I said, yeah, sorry. When you, when you, you stop, momentum. Now, he had a stick shift, so all he had to do was get enough speed, jump it, keep it moving. When you stop the momentum, a lot of us, because of the stress, we stopped. We stopped the momentum. We felt the all we moved on what he said, and then we get the next word, so we stopped. No. Keep moving. Don't stop moving. Don't stop moving. You gotta believe God. Now, I want I want you to know this. One of the things I said, most importantly, he said, with God, all things are possible. With God. If you're in this building today and you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life, I'm gonna tell you that you're putting the cop before the horse, you're working backwards. So here it is. I want to. I want to present you not to this church, but to God. I want to welcome you to the family of God. If you have not said, Vic, he's the Lord of my life. I gave him my heart. I want you to know you can do that today. If that's you, I want you to make that acknowledgement today. Come down for prayer. Secondly, if it's you that I was talking about who's under stress right now, you're under it. You're under it. And you're smiling, but you're not happy. You're not sleeping. You're not resting. I want you to come. I want to connect with you today. I want to ask Dean and the wife to come. I want to ask my wife to come. I want to ask Cameron to come. I want to pray with you today. I want to connect with you today. We want to pray with you. As a matter of fact, Elder, if you don't mind, why don't you come and stand with me again today? I want to connect with you today. Listen, when you leave this place, I feel I felt like I just felt the place of God. I want you to leave this place clear-headed. I want you to leave this place with clarity. First of all, I want you to leave stress-free. Now, 
Here's a responsibility. When God starts the work, we got to help them continue the work. So that means you're going to be disciplined in killing those thoughts that are coming to bring extra stress. Killing those, those thoughts that are telling you contrary to the word of God. I will always tell you the true word of God is always challenged immediately. All right? I want you to know that it does not mean God lied. It does not mean it's going to happen. It just means we're going to have to now put feet to the words of God. Amen? So if you're not saved, you want to be saved, I want you to connect with us today. I want to pray for you today. Those of you who are under the cares of this world, overwhelming, I want to pray with you today. Those of you who may be not feeling well, I want to agree with you today. Healing is the children's bread. I want to pray with you today. People of God are open. Y'all come on down. The people of God are here. We want to pray with you today. We want to connect with you today. Would you come? We're going to believe God today. And when you leave, I guarantee you. Listen to me. Now what you left is going to be there. But you're going to have a different perspective. You're going to be able to see God. You're going to be able to hear Him. We're here. We want to connect with you. We want to pray with you. We want to believe God with you. Someone in this room, you're up for promotion. There's an interview coming up. You're afraid. You have what it takes. I want to connect with you today. I want to, I want to overcome fear with you today. I just want you to see the picture. You may be in this room. You're embarking upon something that you know within your spirit. Maybe entrepreneur. Maybe business owner. And you just need that extra connect, that jump. You know? I want to connect with you today. We we'll believe in God. And for those of you, I just need you to stretch your hands up. We're going to worship the Lord. As we're in this moment, as we're in this moment, as we're in this moment, we're going to pray for our brother. Pray for our sister. In Jesus' name. Lord, today we're going to release and cast the care. We're going to cast the care. We're going to cast the care. We're going to give it over unto you. Can't do anything with it. So Lord, you can do it. So I give it to you. I give it to you. I give it to you. This is what I want you to do. Those of you that are in your seats, I want you to turn to your right and to your left. I want you to begin to pray with your neighbor. Pray with them. Pray for them. Pray for them today. Whatever the Lord gives you and puts you in your spirit, I want you to agree with them. I want you to pray with them today. Whatever it is, you believe in God for. Lord, whatever they need, they need strength. Lord, they need clarity. I believe God with you today. I believe God with you today. I believe God with you today. Yes. 
over your mind and heart that you're trying to provide. But God says, let me provide. I'm going to let you manage. I provide, you manage. So I take the stress away of providing. But I'm going to bridge you with the wisdom to manage what I'm going to give you to provide. I provide, you manage. I provide, you manage. So the wisdom of God on you now is manage. Today be free, ladies and gentlemen. Today be free. And walk under the limitless power of the anointing of God. He who the Son has set free is free indeed. And speak into your homes. May the peace of God meet you when you get back to your homes, even in your cars. Let your minds are free and clear. Begin to expect the limitless God that you serve. I do this for me. Everybody raise your hand. We're going to make this declaration. I don't know if anyone says it's in need of salvation. Say, Father, uh, forgive me of any sin that I've committed against you. Every thought, word, and action. I commit to you my heart. I surrender into your hand. I accept you and ask you to be the Lord in my life. Lead me, guide me, instruct me into the way and ways that you desire. And I will live for you in Jesus' name. I confess you as Lord and King over my life. Come on, give the Lord a hand, praise all of us.